I figured let's take more of a technique, something that sometimes even the most seasoned cook might look at and go like, ooh, ooh, maybe, maybe, maybe I'm a little scared of this one. So I decided to choose. I happen to have in my book a plum galette, which I have to tell you, whenever I make it, I am the best mother, best grandmother, best whatever you want to call me because there is not even a crumb left. So like, yes, note to yourselves, go home and try it and you'll see it's really not difficult. It is really simple. The second thing that we're going to be doing is we're good, that is a sweeter component. And then we're going to be doing a beef crostata. Now you're, you're like, okay, Refki, like you're throwing these names at me, galette, crostata, is there a difference? Seriously? There's no major difference, okay? One, the galette happens to stem from France. So if you're in a Frenchy mood, you can call it a galette. If you're feeling a little more Italiano, then you can call it your crostata. So really either way, there's no right, no wrong, but we're gonna have some fun. So thank you for following along with me. And we're gonna start off with how to make the doughs, okay? The name of my book is simply, as you all saw, and I'm actually going to pull it out and show you, just so you see, I, I know this is like a really good, but it's, Simply, right? So you're saying like, one minute, we're talking about making doughs and, 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 and refrigerating and oh my gosh, okay, really? Follow along, you're going to see it really is simple, okay? So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to actually, I'll even show you, I'm going to open it up. I was going to take out photocopies and I'm like, no, you want to see it. You're going to see that we're going to have some magic going on this evening, but here we go. So we are going to start off, I'm getting all attached, with a plum galette, okay? Look at how beautiful this picture is, so thank you. Hi, thank you, Renee. You would not believe what went into getting this epic photo, but we're going to start off with making our dough, okay? So really, really simple. Um, actually, Amy, I'm going to take the margarines now. Okay, I'm going to just throw some tips and tricks as we're working, because I think it's very important. Thank you so much to throw, I believe, like just the little tips and tricks make it so much easier for you at home. So when you're working with a galette, the first thing, if anybody wants to look at me and say margarine, I'm so sorry, but I want you to know somebody that works in the industry actually told me that really just the FDA at this point has completely made all of the manufacturers change what margarine is made out of. So the ones that actually say trans fat and you're like, yes, I'm being so healthy, you're paying a dollar more, but it's really probably the same item that you're buying that doesn't say trans fat. But I mean, don't use my name. I'm just putting out there what I heard. Um, so we're going to start off very simple. Our entire dough is flour, sugar, sea salt, and margarine that's cubed, okay? So here we go. I have it all measured out because you don't need to watch me measure. You're all experts. Everything is pre-measured here. So here goes our flour. Here goes our sugar. Um, this is our sugar. I even designated what's the filling and what's not. And our salt was in with the sugar. And then we're going to add in our margarine. Um, if you notice, I had Amy bring me the margarine from the refrigerator because you do want your margarine to be chilled. The reason for that is if you're going to be working with a room temperature or a warm margarine, you're going to end up having a very mushy dough and it's going to be very difficult for you to work with it. So you want to have it as chilled as possible. Like you can literally take it right out of your refrigerator. And did you notice how I just, I kind of quartered it? Okay. That's it. And yes, I'm making a mess, but I'm going to keep changing gloves. So don't you worry. All right. Here's where the fun starts. You have one of two choices. I am such a mess right now. I'm going to use my hands. It really works. You can either wash your hands with soap and water, 
or get yourself right in. I want to know if anybody here has a kid that is sensory or if any of you love that sensation. Oh my gosh, this is like the best activity that you can do. Just let them dig in and you want to keep mushing it together until you're crumbling up your margarine and you're going to slowly see, do you see how it's starting to like break down and give me not really pebble size, but it's really going to break down and you want to get it as broken down as you possibly can. Oh, I am so sorry if you can't see. And we're pretty much, I would say we're doing pretty good now. I made sure that most of the flour is incorporated and I have some really nice pebble sized pieces. Okay. At this point, um, you know what I'm just going to ask? Where's my Amy? Angel Amy. Thank you, Angel Amy. Can we just get some water into the ice? Okay. Oh, that's the word. I'm so sorry. Thank you. You are so practical. Thank you. Could you imagine? I'm looking right at the water and I'm like, let's bring it in. Um, yes, because I'm going, let's try to cover it. Okay. That's perfect. All right. Now, it was actually out there, and I want you to know, I didn't say a word to anyone because I wanted it to be a surprise, but I saw with all those gorgeous, gorgeous desserts, I was seeing that going, and I'm like, yes! It's just, it's a good feeling when you see your food going. But thank you very much. A great shout out to Jacqueline Elbaz, known on Instagram as Stuffed, because by the time you're done with her goodies, nobody walks away without being stuffed. Um, what we're going to do now, you didn't even realize, I was just spending some time so that the water would get really good and cold. But we need ice water now. Okay. We're going to need two tablespoons. Shocking. Two tablespoons. So if you, you know, followed along, we did flour, sugar, very little sugar. It's three tablespoons total, a little bit of salt. And now we're going to add water with our margarine and ta-da, here we go. Okay. So I'm going to make sure that I don't get any of the ice in it because I only want water. Okay. I'm getting ice. Let me, I got to work this one a little bit. Okay, here we go. So we got one. It's going to actually melt a little more by the time we get to our next one. And here comes number two. I'm going to give it a drop more because I don't think that it was like a full tablespoon. And check how it gets together. It's extremely important that you use ice water. The cold, once again, is going to help your margarine remain very cold in order for you to let your dough come together. Do you see how it's slowly coming together? And another trick, don't work your dough too much, okay? It's going to be just fine, all right? Look at how I'm almost there. As soon as I'm done, we're going to put it into a piece of saran wrap, which I prepared already. I happen to love, I use the press and seal because it just sticks together so nicely. But we're just about ready. And I will tell you that my margarine was a little bit softer than usual. It took a trip in from Lakewood, so it got a little bit soft. But here we go. And ta-da, we are doing good. So right now we have a really nice, this is going to be my sweet dough. Was that difficult? Whoever thinks it was difficult, please raise your hand. No demerits, no, no, nobody's going to be sent out. But like, I just seriously want to know, did anybody think that that was too complicated to do at home? Okay, good. I'm glad. So here we go. We're going to roll it up. And this will go into the refrigerator. I'm going to leave it. And if you don't mind, pardon my mess. We're going to put this on the side. And we're going to work on the savory component now. Okay? For the savory component... We're going to call it the crostata just because like we wanted to be cool and use a different name. Like we said, they're really comparable. I'm sorry. My mother always taught me, anybody who knows my mother, she always taught me, Rick, whenever you're working, cage, clean as you go, C-A-Y-G. I, I really try hard. Um, my kids know it as well. I'm trying hard not to make a mess, but okay, you'll forgive me. Okay, here we go. We're going to work on our savory part now. We're going to make a meat galette. So I am turning to, I'm sorry, a beef crostata. Hello. You just caught me being very human. Sorry about that. But here we go. 
I'm going to find it. It's going to show up because it is in the meat section. And the question is where it's hiding. Somebody's going to find the page before me because it's just, just because you're waiting. But thank you for bearing with me. Okay, we're going to find this. Please. Yes. Okay. Page number 180. Check this out. Okay. Look how beautiful it is. So this is our savory component. Now, I will tell you with our savory component, it's slightly different. What we did was, once again, pre-measured. Do I get a little bit of a point for organization? Shlaimi, I didn't leave anything home this time. <laughs> just, I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, this actually has regular wheat and then a little bit of whole wheat flour. You know, just trying to be healthy over here. And then we have over here some salt, uh, some salt, I apologize, some oregano and basil. Yum. Okay. Those are like very delicious, savory components. And that's it. And then I'm going to put gloves on and we're going to do our savory. So you see, again, this one wasn't that difficult. You know, instead of the sugar, we added a little bit of seasoning. Once again, we're going to go in with our margarine. I'm going to try to stay clean because I want to show you that you can actually mix it up another way. You know, if you're not sensory and you like to stay really, really, really clean and you maybe don't have gloves on hand, you might want to go ahead and get yourself what's called a pastry cutter, okay? Really simple. I think it's about anywhere between $4.99 to $9.99, um, but it works great. You'll see how it'll cut it in. And I'm going to really work hard on staying clean. It's a little hard when you're working with the margarine, but here we go. I'm going to it's, it's soft, folks, but okay. Will you forgive me if we don't end up with a perfect... I'm really going to try over here. But at least you see it works. So we're slicing it up. I don't want to bore you with this. I stayed pretty clean. And we're actually going to just... I don't know if you can see, but basically the four, the four strips kind of allow the butter or the margarine to break, you know, to break down into little pieces and you're able to get your crumbs again. I just keep knocking it off. It does work very well. Are you able to see how it's starting to incorporate? I'm trying very hard for you to be able to see. Um, but this is going to come together really quickly. Now, we're almost there. And regardless of me trying to stay clean, I'm going to have to, at the end, put it together Anyways, because this is not going to let it become a complete, and I, I think it works a little quicker, so I'm just going right back into it. <laughs> okay, we're almost ready. I'm getting my really nice pieces. Do you see how quickly it comes together? Again, it's, you know, some people are like, oh my gosh, and I will tell you, whether it's the beef crostata or if it's the plum galette, it does have a couple of steps because you made your dough and then you're going to make your filling, but it's, it's like really comes together so nicely. So here we go. We're just about there. Are you seeing how we're already coming together? This one gets three tablespoons of the ice water and the ice water again is so important because that's, Ooh, this was nice. I got it. Here's one and two. Here we go. Okay, so we have three of them. I'm going to put this together. And as soon as we have this, magic is going to happen because my angel Amy is going to make sure that we're going to go straight from here into filling. But remember, once you have it made, it needs to rest in the refrigerator for one hour. Look at that. You are terrific. Thank you so much, Amy. So here we go. This one, remember I told you that you saw how my margarine was a little bit warmer than it should have been. So it is a little sticky, but as soon as it gets into the refrigerator, it is going to congeal and we're going to be just fine. It does, if you ever have that happen, don't worry. Just pop it in your fridge and you'll be okay. 
All right. But really make sure that it is, thank you so much, that it is ooh, nice and cold. Um, you're going to make sure these can go in the fridge, I guess, for the meantime. And we're going to start putting it together. I mean, come on. Was that not magic? We're ready to make galettes. I mean, hello. Here we go. So I'm just, as I keep saying, I need to just clean as I go because it's rough for me um, if it's a mess. Okay, here we go. Another set of gloves. Do you understand why I'm having such a hard time that Costco cannot keep stock on the gloves? I can't deal. I can't deal. But I did discover this new company that is actually really good because, you know, I hate the ones when like you put your finger in and all of a sudden your finger's sticking out or whatever you do, you're, you're a mess. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to prep. When we're working with dough, I like to take two pieces of parchment. Here's another one of my best friends whenever I get into the kitchen. Okay. And I'm going to just show you just another trick, which I know many of my friends love. Um, I happen to love working with real sheep hands, in particular, when you're making a crostata or a galette, you do want to have your sheet pan because this will help you conduct heat and it will give you that beautiful crust on the bottom. Now, if you don't have, that's okay. You can put it in the oven. It will take a little longer. And I'm actually going to show you some protective methods to make sure that we don't end up with a soggy galette because I think that's probably like the worst feeling ever. So we're going to throw that in. But I did want to show you, incidentally, if you can see, whoops, if you can see over here, um, I actually earmarked. This is one of my Fleischigs written in red, um, which I think is extremely, you know, just a good thing. I actually have dairy written on my milchik ones, and then my parv ones, I just kind of leave be. They hang with nothing. That's just my little trick. And you know what I do it with? Nail polish. It's awesome. I'm serious. And my help at home, she couldn't even understand. Can you imagine when you think that you have, you're so ahead of yourself? And I couldn't understand why she was spending like an hour on a pot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Senora, it's beautiful. It's good. Yeah, she got all of my nail polish off. Just saying. It's okay. So we took out the bottle and we did it again and we got a good laugh. Now, you can do one of two things. If you want, you can actually sprinkle just a little bit of flour on your paper before you work. Um, actually, another trick that you could do if you want, like I personally don't find it to be such a big deal to roll out my galette. But if you would like, you can actually start off by turning your dough. Do you see how I'm just pressing it into a disc? You can actually refrigerate it as a disc to make it a little bit easier when you start rolling. But this is where the fun starts. I love this part. Okay, just dump it. You're going to cover it with another piece of paper, of parchment paper. And then I try to kind of get myself ready now here's where the goliath is going to do some magic here <laughs> but i start to roll but i did you notice how i hold my paper in place with my body so this way it's not rolling off or getting you know i mean it can take walks so i keep doing that and then i slowly do you see how i'm like working a little bit in a circular motion now, a, a galette or a crostata does not have to be perfect. Ask Renee, she'll be the first one. I remember her calling me when she knew we were doing this recipe. She said, Rifki, please don't make it look too perfect because I, I suffer a little bit from that. I love for things to be beautiful and perfect. But really, the beauty of a galette is that you want it to be rustic, okay? So we're rolling it out, and as soon as we finish... I hope you don't mind. I'm a little bit struggling because I'm not tall enough for this, but it's working. <laughs> we're definitely doing okay, and I'm definitely seeing that we're rounding out. I'm going to actually, when I lift off the top, you'll actually see that we're doing pretty okay considering. Now, let's say you roll out your dough, and as you're taking it off, you notice that, uh-oh, looks a little sticky, okay? Don't panic. Remember like when I made my ball before? 
I'm not going to panic. What you can do is there's a couple of tricks that you can do. You can either take your sheet pen. I'm actually I'm pretty impressed with the fact that it's not as beautiful as I can usually roll it out. I'm feeling a little not so in control, but I feel like we're definitely getting there. I'll show you in a second. OK, I am almost sweating. OK, but check that out. Do you see that I'm, I'm relatively round? It's not bad. OK, now, did you notice I told you I felt it was like a little soft? What I would do at this point, just to make my life easier, let me just make sure that this is the power of one. You can pop this into the freezer, give it 15 minutes, and what's going to happen is any of those fibers that are a little bit too loose are going to firm up in the freezer, and then you can take it out and continue, no problem at all, okay? Now, a crostata or a galette, whichever one you have, I'm going to get my angel Amy again. Amy? Can I ask you to nuke this for literally like 30 seconds? Um, this is raspberry jam. Now, there are a few different things that you can do. I like to make a little bit of a barrier between your food and your dough. The reason for that is you don't, you just don't want it to get like mushy. You want to get that really good, crispy crust. So what we're going to do is she's going to get for me the red raspberry jam, and we're just going to stay about two inches from the outer edge, and we're just going to brush some red raspberry jam on. And in the meantime, what we're going to do is we're going to add in all of the different components to our plums, which uh, both Jacqueline and I struggled because it's not really quite the season. But this happens to call for some lemon zest. You can skip it if you don't want to use it. Thank you so much. It got quite hot, which is great. Um, but I'm going to show you how a little trick had a zest, okay? Most of the time you see when someone's using a zester, they hold it this way and they're shaving it into a plate or into a bowl. A little trick for yourself that you can so control, put your finger in the middle and have your bridge in the center. Start to zest and check this out. You can control it. Whenever you're zesting, you want to make sure that you're doing a very light zesting because if you start to zest the white part, known as the pith, what ends up happening is it's bitter. But if you take just the zest, oh my gosh, it takes it over the top. And like I said, it's optional. I think it's something that is definitely worthwhile. But do you see how great this works? Um, I mean, you're going to get to taste it because Jacqueline made a bunch of them that you should be able to taste. And here we go. Oh, absolutely. So that was actually an excellent question. And if you cannot get plums, you can do peaches, apples, pears. This will work on any stone fruit out there, OK? Um, like, really. And, it, and it'll be delicious. My kids happen to love, like, I'm going to be honest, I put an apple um, an apple galette into Simply Gourmet, and my kids still like the plum better. It's, it's delicious. I'm not going to tell you it's not, but I'm telling you that that is something fantastic. So here we go. I'm just very quickly adding fresh lemon juice in. Fresh is always preferable if you can't it's okay. I won't tell anyone. Real Lemon needs to stay in business, and they do a very good job, so we're good, okay? We're going to continue. I have it ready. We're going to do some cornstarch. The cornstarch is going to add, act as a binder, and it's going to make sure that your liquid is not leaking all over the place. And then we have, again, I think in total, this entire... Um, the, I think it's maybe a third of a cup of sugar. So think about the amount of sugar that goes into an apple crisp when you're making your topping, whether it's brown sugar or whatever. It's much higher in sugar content where here we had three tablespoons that went into our dough and we had another uh, just about a quarter of a cup that went into here. We're done now. We're just going to mix it up and we're going to lay it on. Okay, so we're going to do this quick. Got my brush, 
And if you don't have a brush, a spoon will work, the back of a knife, an offset spatula, all these things will work. I'm just gonna make a quick little round circle with our red raspberry jam. What I love about it is as much as we're creating a barrier because it's gonna harden, it also, you're layering your flavors because the raspberry is a pretty, you know, pretty, shall we say, strong flavor, even though we didn't do that much of it. And I'm gonna just very quickly show you, we don't have to do the whole thing, but I just want you to know, cause like some people like to just see how it happens. So I'm just gonna very quickly mix this up. Um, and I will tell you again, another thank you because I know Jacqueline went all over the place looking for plums as well as I did. I got the last four plums and I had to spend even more money. I got organic plums. So I, 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 these are going to be like off the charts cause they're organic just saying, right? Anyways. So we are just about put together over here. I will tell you that once you start mixing all your fruits together, it's going to start releasing some of the natural juices of your fruit. Um, you can add it in. Remember, you have your cornstarch, which is going to absorb, okay? And maybe I should have been a little bit more thought out and gotten a bigger bowl, but it's, it's okay. Like, I see that I didn't get the bottom, but I, it looks like we are quite... Uh, covered. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the outer end of our, and we're going to go around. What I like to do, I actually, usually, my pieces are a little bit bigger than I usually make, but it is absolutely fun. I'm going to lift it up for everyone to see, um, but I am working in a circle. And then when it comes to the second layer, what I do is, okay, Sorry about that. Um, you see how we're, we're just going to work our way around. You don't see it. Can you see it? Okay. So when it comes to your second layer, you want to overlap. And I'm going to do a couple of them so you can actually see what I mean. And what ends up happening, I find it so beautiful when I do this. You'll see how I overlap. Can you see how I did my second layer? You see that? It's, it's almost, I would say, almost halfway through. But you see how the second layer is standing up a little bit? What's beautiful about it is when you actually close it up, you end up with a little bit of like a starburst as it's baking. And of course, it's going to flatten a little bit, but you end up with such a beautiful three dimension when you're done. So let's make believe we went all the way around. And we're going to move on to how to fold a galette, okay? So that's why we put it right onto our baking sheet with a piece of parchment paper. What we're gonna do is we are going to fold over, covering our, can you see how I'm folding? And then as I go along, before I lift up, I'm actually going to try to pleat, okay? And again, and as you're going around, you just keep folding and pleating, and it looks so beautiful when you're done. I'm just going to quickly, can you see how we folded and we pleated as we're going along? And I would continue all the way to the end, but we're pressed for time. What was that? We can certainly do that. When you're done, completely folding around, and remember, there's nothing that could be wrong. It, 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 you can never do anything wrong. Whatever you do is going to be your masterpiece, and it's going to be beautiful. What I will tell you is that it bakes up so crispy because those pieces of margarine that you didn't completely break down, those little pebbles, as it's baking, the margarine starts to, to um, break down, and it becomes liquid. And what happens is that's what helps it become very crispy at the end. It's like really fantastic. Once we finish, I'm going to send this around for you to see, but we're going to just take our brush, which we clean, and we're going to dip it in water, or you can even use a glove or your hand or whatever, and you're going to brush it with water. 
and this is my personal preference. I actually love to use turbinado. I'm actually, you know what? Maybe I'll do it with the power of milk. Um, let me do that just, just for you to be able to see. I'm just going to use my finger. But you can actually do that. You see how I'm using my finger? And it, it works just fine. I'm covering the perimeter over here. And I will tell you, this one's going to be a lot more rustic than many of mine. Just saying. But uh, we're doing the best we can here. I then take turbinado sugar is a very, very crystallized, crunchy sugar, which you're going to see. I love it because it adds another crunch. If you want, just take it and pass it around. When you bake it, you end up with this just insane crunch, and it tastes so delicious. As soon as it comes out of the oven, mind you, it bakes 40 minutes, done. So it's really not that difficult. Did that look too difficult for you to try at home? It's really for my next one, but I just, I just, yeah. Why do I do it at all? Because just like when you're, let's say, baking challah, you like to egg it so you get that good crispiness. This is just added crisp. We're layering those flavors. And that, like I said, that turbinado sugar is just fantastic. But I will tell you, if you don't have turbinado sugar at home, regular sugar will work. Just saying. Okay. So that takes care of our plum galette. As soon as it comes out of the oven, we're going to make sure that our raspberry jam didn't congeal because generally it congealed and I need to warm it up again. But when it's still warm, I just quickly give it a quick one over and it gets that gorgeous purple flavor. And you know what? If you have purple plums, it's an even more beautiful purple flavor. Either way, it works, okay? When it comes to our savory component, to our beef crostata, which it, you're really doing virtually the same thing. We're going to roll it out. I feel it, and I can tell you it is a little bit soft. It's going to work, no problem. Do you see how beautiful, before I even start, do you see all of those beautiful spices in there? When you take a bite of it with, and of course I followed the flavors through in the ground beef, it is so epic. I can't begin to tell you. And it's amazing because my family is very much like, sometimes I'm embarrassed to say it, but they're like such meat and potato guys and gals that sometimes I'm like, come on, cut, cut, cut a mother a break. Don't you want something else? When I make this, I'm just as good as a mother as when I make the plum galette. And that's saying a lot. I'm, I really mean it. So here we go. We're just going to roll it out really quickly. I'm going to round it out. What we're going to do to be our barrier over here is I actually made, this is a garlic aioli that happens to also have, it's a garlic and basil aioli. So instead of brushing something sweet, we're going to brush this aioli. And then I happen to have, I pre-made it, but we're finishing everything the same way. I made my beef, which is, I mean, I think it is so delicious. It's got onions. It's got shiitake mushrooms. Anybody who knows me well know I, there isn't a mushroom that I ever met that I didn't love. So, of course, there are mushrooms in there. And there's onions. And there's red peppers. I mean, we're talking delicious, delicious. And, of course, get creative if somebody doesn't like peppers leave it out. It's still going to look beautiful. And once you're done, all you're going to do is drizzle it on top. If you want, by the way, a great way for you to get like a really pretty drizzle. You know, those in the dollar store, they sell those squeezy jars. Like sometimes you have ketchup and mustard in the olden days, like for the picnic. So they make them in clear bottles. I know they're available on Amazon, um, but you can even get them like in Michael's, any craft store. It's the best. So we're going to layer it on the bottom. We're going to dump our entire um, meat mixture inside in the middle, and then we're going to roll it out. And it's really up to all of you because I know that you really want to enjoy all the delicious food that Jacqueline prepared and get to enjoy the gorgeous ambiance. So you can either watch me finish it, um, or if you want, like you kind of saw, do you want to see how this finishes up? You do want to see? Okay. So I'm going to work really quickly. And we're going to get to see a beautiful crostata when it's done. And this one, of course, is going to go on my flechix. 
Okay, I'm trying so hard not to go out, but that does happen sometimes and we're okay. I'm actually getting a really nice circle over here. You know, every time it works out so great, you applaud yourself and you're like, oh, I'm so great. I'm just kidding. But anyways, okay, we're doing pretty good. I'm rolling off a little bit. I'm going to try to guide the dough back here. You see how otherwise it runs away from me? I really need to hold it with my body, but it works. Okay, we're just about good. I'm just going to, okay. Um, if you want to do it all white wheat, you can certainly do it. Absolutely. Okay. I, I will tell you that whole wheat has a little bit more of an absorption. And it's interesting. It also, it's a little bit coarser than white flour, but 100% if you don't have it, you're good. Okay. So here we go. And by the way, for those of you who asked why I had milk, I just, you know, I always like to say, my mother taught me not to play with my food. Please don't tell her. I, I play with my food all the time. I really do. So what we're going to do over here is we are going to, I'm just, I guess I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to use my knife. I'm just going to create a little bit of, oh, I didn't put it onto my, nobody told me I made a mistake already. Well, it's really not a mistake, but it's just so much easier before you fill it to transfer it. So I left myself my two inches. I have my garlic and here we go. I'm going to transfer it very carefully onto my baking sheet. And it, I know it would be so nice if everybody can say like, oh yeah. And then the mixture is there, but honest to God, it's so not difficult. Okay. And I'm just going to pile this. Usually I do this with a slotted spoon. But being that AJ Madison is so kind and we are in their kitchen, and I, I have to tell you, you got to check around. Oh my gosh, their appliances are magnificent and really top of the line, cutting edge. Here we go. I'm just getting this in. You see how I'm piling it pretty high. Um, you know, and if you really want, you can make sure that you strategically place your mushrooms or your peppers, aka Renee has taught me to try to make my food look beautiful because people really do eat with their eyes. All right. Once you have that done, we're going to start with our folding and you're actually going to get to see a complete pleating. Um, the only thing I'm going to ask is please forgive me. This is not going to be my neatest work because it is a little bit. Remember, if I was at home, I probably would have thrown this into my freezer for 15 minutes before continuing just to make sure it's, it's, I know it sounds like, ah, 15 minutes, you know, if your dough is great and behaving, that's so fine. But if you need the couple of extra minutes, it's really worth it because do you see how it, it, it is behaving? Okay. And I will teach you one more trick when you bake. Okay, there are times where your crostata, and it's okay, like my hands were cleaned before, and I'm just going to finish it up. Are you able to see my pleating over here at all? Okay, trying very hard to look so beautiful for you. Check that out, folks. Check it out. Okay. Oh, that was like so nice. Okay, now what we're going to do is, once again, I'm going to use one of my gloves, but this time I wanted to do the par of milk because there happens, it, it, I just felt that it adds a little bit more of a flavor. And if you notice, I'm literally just going around through each of my pleats and making sure it gets, this one we're not going to add any sugar because it's our savory one. If somebody specifically wants to add some herbs, it'll stick and it'll look beautiful. And then we're going to bake it when it comes out. I will tell you sometimes when you're baking, it kind of opens up a little bit like a flower that's in full bloom. All you need to do is let it come out while it's still warm. You can either take a pair of gloves and just kind of pat it back down. But I, I promise you it goes back into shape. Once you put it down, it's fine. 
And what I like to do, by the way, this is so freezer friendly as well as your plum galette. Like these are great if you have like this year. Um, I think my friend checked out that Pesach is not like we had Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur Sukkot. But um, like this would have been great for Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur Sukkot, right? You have it in your freezer, you pop it out, bam! And it's 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 really nice or especially, you know, when, when we have to do a Hoshana Rabbah meals and, and then you're doing meals that night. This is great. Great for a supper, great for Yantif, and definitely comes together simply. So thank you so much for cooking Simply Gourmet with Rifki Kleiman this evening. I'm so grateful to each and every one of you that took the time to come out. And we have a question on the floor. Yes? So actually what I do is I use a pie cutter. I find that's perfect, or you can serve it with a knife. I want you to know, it's the circumference is great. Like you can even put it on a main dish plate, or if you have one that's like a little bit bigger, it's so pretty. I serve it whole. I don't try to serve it in pieces, and it does cut beautifully. It really, no, no, it really doesn't, because the meat kind of, I mean, I'm not going to tell you that a crumb won't fall, but you're going to get really nice, neat, pieces. And like I said, if you do invest, and I'm going to be honest, like, I don't want to sound like, oh, yeah, I, I've been doing this for years. You know what, it took me a while to go out and invest and say, yes, I'm going to get flesh sheet pans, milk sheet pans. The difference in particular with the galette, you are not going to get that crispy, crunchy, you know, crust unless you use, but it does work. I promise you it works on disposable because you know what? I started on disposable, just saying. It really, really, really works. So I also, before I step down, I really want to thank, usually, I really want to thank Fleischig's Magazine and AJ Madison for having me here this evening. And Amy, for doing such an unbelievable setup, it's unbelievable. Everyone should have so much Hatzlacha. Thank you. Yes, question. Okay, that is actually, that is a bomb question. That is a fantastic, fantastic question. There is a very big difference between sea salt, which is equal to table salt, which is also equal to Himalayan salt. Those are all going to be the same. You might have a little bit of differences in the flavors or where the actual salt is, so to speak, mined from, but they're going to be the same. It is much more potent than kosher salt, which happens to have a much more flavorful taste, okay? Kosher salt actually has natural... It's, it's actually almost like citrusy undertones. It's going to be a little bit more sour. So you're going to achieve very different flavors. So if, let's say, you find yourself, and it does happen. I know that we're awesome balabustas, but like, oh, your salt ran out. Can you exchange it and interchange it? Absolutely. But your kosher salt, if it calls for sea salt or regular salt, you're going to add more of the kosher salt. And if it calls for kosher salt, do not like half it or third it because it is that much more potent. That was an excellent question. Any other questions? Yes. Absolutely. Both. Another excellent question on the floor. Frozen or raw? It will work great. Frozen or raw, I want you to know I've had where like I made just a bunch of them because I tend to not really know how to cook for just the right amount of people. Most people bless me for that because you could call me. I am inviting anybody. I, I get phone calls sometimes a half hour before Shabbos. I just don't like to get caught not having enough food. So um, I remember I had made too many and I froze it. And that was my learning curve because most people who know me well, I am the worst person to ask about freezing because I just... I don't know. I'm just not a great freezer, but it it's, it freezes beautifully, and the taste is just as good, 
just heat it up slowly. You can even put it in on like 300 until you'll see as it's starting to defrost, but like literally from freezer straight to oven, you be good. Any other questions? Yes. Absolutely. I found the same thing. As the silicone was coming out, I bought all the most expensive stuff. And um, I, just for anybody who wants, I have a garage filled with like, giz, you know, gadgets and gizmos and stuff that were like, oh my God, the hottest. And yeah, just saying. So I do agree with you. I tend to very, very much work with, um, I know I'm sounding like redundant, but I do like to work with the stainless steel. You will find that there's also a very big difference between the, um, the coated stainless steel pans and the one that's not. The coated, you're going to have to reduce your baking time because it will bake quicker. So honestly, my preference, I like to go with the good old-fashioned stainless steel. I, I, I don't prefer. So I honestly, I really stopped. I mean, I own the silicone. I used to do my challahs on the silicone. I just find like, I just buy from like Restaurant Depot. I buy like, literally, I think I keep them in business. So maybe they'll thank me one day. They probably won't. But, you know, I should take stock in it. I, I love parchment paper. Any other questions? Okay, folks, you're, oh, one more question. Oh, so the reason why I heated it up is because generally when you're going to open up a jar of jam, jelly, preserves, whatever, and mind you, all of them will work. You don't have to worry if there's pieces, you know, unless you're sensory like me. So I specifically look for the ones that don't come with pieces. They all will work. And the reason why you, I heat it up is just to make it very liquidy so that it'll be easy for me to brush. If you don't have a microwave or you don't want to dirty something else up, Ladies, I feel your pain. I never want to make another pan dirty or a pot dirty. And that's something you're going to find in the book. Legit, I put myself in your feet and I was like, uh-uh-uh, we're not separating eggs. No, that is so not happening today. And I literally worked it that we shouldn't have to. What you can do if you don't have a method to heat it up, just take a fork and kind of really beat it real good. You're going to find that it, it, will, it will loosen up for you. Okay. Yes. Confection. Oh, convection. Okay. So honestly, convection is fantastic because convection, there is a fan that is blowing the air around and circulating the air around your baked good. So honestly, my hala is always made on convection. Baked goods always are on convection. And I will tell you, if I'm running out of time, let's say, let's say Shabbos, I like, but the last thing I do is my meat. Anybody who knows me knows like it's got to be perfect, medium, rare. And as my daughter one time said, when we made a wedding, so we didn't know how our newcomer liked their meat. And she said, so how would you like your meat? Would you like it to ooh or to moo? We offer it both ways, I've learned. Um, so if you run out of time, you can put your convection on and that will help your meat cook quicker. But just remember, that is worth it. That's a gadget I'm not giving up. You don't have to get the $100 electric, but definitely invest in a meat thermometer. Any other questions? Absolutely, you can do cake in convection. What I do find interestingly, when I use it on convection, so what happens is you're going to see 325, which is equal to 350. Like right away, it's going to reduce it by 25 degrees. Um, I do find that when I'm baking on convection, it does need a few minutes more. Just saying. It's, it's like an interesting thing. Your cake will cook through. It'll be moist but it might need a couple more minutes. So, you know, I'm sure everyone's familiar with the toothpick test. So, in other words, when, if you put most ovens, if they have, and you, you will tell me if I am correct, most ovens, even let's say if they're not 
a high, high end oven. If you're going to put it onto convection mode, we'll immediately reduce it for you. So you put in, thank you very much. You put in what you would like it to bake at. If you want it at 350, you put in 350 and it's genius. It just will go down to 325 with the fan running. All right. Thank you so much again. You guys work fantastic and please enjoy.